the lord be with you and with your spirit reading from the holy gospel according to saint luke glory to you o lord chapter 18 verses from 1 jesus told his disciples a parable about the need to pray continually and never lose heart there was a judge in a certain town he said who had neither fear of god nor respect for man in the same town there was a widow who kept on coming to him and saying i want justice from you against my enemy for a long time he refused but at last he said to himself maybe i have neither fear of god nor respect for man but since she keeps pestering me i must give this widow her just rights or she will persist in coming and worry me to death and the lord said you notice what the unjust judge has to say now will not god see justice done to his chosen who cry to him day and night even when he delays to help them i promise you he will see justice done to them and done speedily but when the son of man comes will he find any faith on earth the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ kindly be seated today's gospel is speaking to us about the persistence and the perseverance that we need in prayer Luke chapter 18 verse 7 the lord is reminding us Luke chapter 18 verse 7 the lord is reminding us for everyone to follow and understand and will not god let's repeat this word of god together and will not god grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night will he delay long in helping them sisters and brothers will the lord can the lord pretend that he cannot hear today we are on this live stream now this is almost we started it in march now this is november it's almost 8 9 months that we are on this mission how it all started you can see every adoration every time you come you see the tv we have the blessed sacrament exposed except during the eucharist that we have because the eucharist itself is the celebration of this blessed sacrament now how it happened will not god grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night when we had this perpetual adoration day and night 24 hours in the presence of the lord praying what happened we did not just become a blessing for ourselves we became a blessing for the whole world believe this is mark chapter 11 verse 24 this is his word he his promise what did he promise so i tell you opening the mouth using the tongue jesus said this is the word of jesus let's repeat so i tell you whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours sisters and brothers this is god's word whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have received it that means the moment you pray the moment you had a prayer in your heart you have received it it will be you was so if there is something that is so powerful in this world is prayer there is nothing that is as effective as powerful as prayer you may be sick you may be weak you may be bedridden you may be in the icu you may be in the hospital wherever you are maybe you are traveling maybe you are doing some work wherever you are if you are a prayerful person you are a powerful person sisters and brothers and the lord promised whatever you ask in prayer it will be yours you have believe that you have received it what you need to do 
you need to persevere in prayer and this, jesus himself said this is luke chapter 18 verse 1 the same scripture we can read jesus himself said he who set an example he is the one who set an example and he said then jesus told them a parable about they need to pray always and not to lose heart jesus said you need to pray always and you should not lose heart this is from the very life of jesus we read in the gospel of mark chapter 1 verse 35 mark chapter 1 verse 35 let's read this word of god in the morning repeat together in the morning while it was still very dark he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed who is jesus the son of god the word made flesh the king of kings the lord of lords he prayed in the morning while it was still very dark that, that means it is not at morning before the sun was means the uh, the morning he got up went out to a deserted place and there he prayed now what surprised to me is that i read in a book this is a prayer book at the introduction of this prayer book a priest has described the importance of the prayer book the prayer and he has written in this way all these disciples were with jesus they see jesus performing miracles healing the sick raising the dead walking on the water they were so much amazed and they were wondered about the miracle the power of all these gifts in jesus but we have no, we notice one thing in this book is written none of these disciples asking jesus for the gift of miracle working or gift of healing those are the gifts that are attracting people to jesus but they did not ask any of these gifts instead they asked for one particular gift luke chapter 11 verse 1 we read why did these disciples are asking for this particular gift we read he was praying in a certain place and after he had finished one of his disciples said to him lord teach us to pray as john taught his disciples now they could have asked jesus help us to get the gift of healing gift of miracle working gift of powerful faith gift of tongues gift of prophecy but they found jesus always in prayer so they came to know all these gifts are in operation in jesus because of the prayer that he has he the most holy god if he prayed he wants us to imitate this character and this is the gift we all want the gift of prayer once a mother has the gift of prayer the children are saved if you have the gift of prayer you will save the whole nation if you have a gift of prayer you will be a blessing for the whole world if a one single person as weak as you are that's why this is a free gift if you receive this gift maybe you are so insignificant you may feeling worthless you may be feeling meaningless you may be a widow you may be bedridden you may be sick and you may think that your life is not worth living but if you have this gift of prayer that you get from god you will be a great blessing look at the life of the saints what was their contribution actually there were most of these saints were very sick they were not contributing anything physically and externally but their contribution was prayer and it is their prayer that has really helped this world to stand the prayer of saint faustina what was her prayer eternal father we offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and and the sins of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world remember a poor sister in krakow in poland prayed privately in secret in silence made the whole world to receive god's mercy she was sick 
She was always sick, bedridden, lived only 33 years. But her life became a great blessing. Today, as you listen to me, do you see, think that, no, I'm useless. You know, I'm not contributing anything. I am sick. I'm a widow. I, I am uh, always weak. I cannot even walk properly. You may be physically handicapped. You may have a lot of challenges. You may be financially poor. But let no Christian say, I am useless. A, you have a weapon, you have a powerful gift God has freely won to give you. This gift is the gift of prayer. Once you, you take this gift of prayer, you will be a blessing. Today, those who are bedridden, those who are sick, those who are old, I have to give you a prayer that St. Paul prayed. This is Colossians chapter 1 verses from 9 to 13 you can use this prayer for anyone who asked you any prayer request you can pray this beautiful prayer colossians chapter 1 verses from 9 colossians chapter 1 from 9 9 to 13 you will be praying you can first you don't want to repeat you can first listen to me how do i pray then you can make it your prayer so if you are a bedridden patient Anybody is coming to you and asking you for prayer. You can pray this prayer, putting their name, claiming God's blessing upon them. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with, you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Saint Paul is praying for his people. What is his prayer? He is asking God for the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. He is asking the Lord to give this particular person. For example, if you are praying for Monica, maybe your wife, why, what do you pray? Lord, I pray so that she may have the knowledge of God's will and spiritual wisdom and understanding. We continue. Until 13 we will pray. So that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work, as you grow in the knowledge of God. Sisters and brothers, a prayer which is St. Paul is praying through the word of God, is that we may lead a life pleasing to God. We may grow in the knowledge of God. The more and more we pray, the more and more we should know what exactly God wants from us. We continue. Verse 11. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully, we continue, giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. We start from nine. So I'm going to claim this prayer for Monica. For example, you can pray for your husband, your wife, your son, anybody who is going through a trouble, you have to make it a prayer for them as St. Paul prayed for the people in Colossians. In the same way that we pray specifically claiming this prayer for them. For this reason, since the day I heard about Monica, I have not ceased praying for her and asking that she may be filled with, we continue, filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. We continue. So that she may lead life worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to, to God, as she bear fruit in every good work and as she grow in the knowledge of God. May she be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may she be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father 
who has enabled her to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light he has rescued us re, he has rescued her from the power of darkness and transferred her into the kingdom of his beloved son sisters and brothers if we check go through this prayer once again from verse 9 we read we we find there are 10 gifts saint paul is praying for the people of colossians which are these 10 gifts as you go through this you will understand the first one he is praying continuously for the people the second he is praying for the gift of the knowledge of god's will the third one he is praying for spiritual wisdom and the fourth one he is praying for the gift of understanding then the fifth one he is praying for these people to be fruitful and the sixth one he is praying for their spiritual growth and the sixth one he is praying for the increase of the knowledge of god and the eighth one he is praying for the gift of endurance then ninth he is praying for the gift of patience and the tenth one he is praying for the gift of joyfulness that they serve them with joyfulness this is not a small simple prayer a prayer that includes all the spiritual gifts to be transmitted to the people in in that place in the same way if somebody is asking you for a prayer don't just pray for a few minutes pray until they are filled with god's wisdom and they grow spiritually and that's the way we pray persistently until they have been converted remember the life example that the holy catholic church put forth the life of saint monica it's the church teaches 18 years she prayed so actually why did what was the effect of her prayer Augustine not just got converted he became a priest then he became a bishop then he became a saint and a church father see the transformation so the 18 years of investment in prayer has made saint augustine become a profound apostle a profound instrument in the hand of god we were discussing about the retreats that we conduct at this divine retreat center continuously it is every day in the morning we had the kongani retreat now we have every evening we have this live stream why it is going on is not because of the power of father joseph or father jose or any of us because you can see a prayer counter we have started on the left side of your tv screen prayer counter since we started this prayer counter with a fasting with a rosary with the word of god with our father prayer with the stations of the cross with the divine mercy chaplet that is the secret of this daily ministry when we stop this prayer counter we are uh, cutting the roots of this ministry sisters and brothers let no one misguide us if a dad or a mom pray the children will persevere I have seen people saying I am today I have met a, an alcoholic person some time back he said father I know today I have come for a retreat because of the prayer of my mother she never keeps the rosary down she is praying all throughout even in the night I can see that as long as she is awake she will just keep on praying the rosary such devoted mother brought this son though he was away from god for some time brought back to god sisters and brothers there is nothing as powerful as prayer and there is no better contribution than prayer we had a retreat and after the retreat some people it was in cameroon in an african country after this this retreat they gave me a big contribution for my travel back then i told them that i i don't want uh, any contribution but i want you all pray one decade of the rosary for me every day then they said we will pray but you also have to accept uh, this contribution then i said no 
these ten Hail Marys that each of you is pray is more valuable than any amount of money that you give me. Anyway, they accepted and they agreed to pray. Sisters and brothers, the day you come to know a small little prayer is more powerful and more precious than any amount of money and contribution you can receive from God. You are really fulfilling God's will in your life. You need prayer. Jesus himself, he set a powerful example of prayer. His life itself was prayer. We read in Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. The prayer life of Jesus we will see. Now during those days he went out to the mountain to pray. And he spent the night in prayers to God. See before we saw he was praying early morning. Before the morning before the sun was rising he was praying now in the night he was spending do we do we understand that this is the example that jesus was sitting in front of us that we need to pray then when we pray most of us we are tired of prayer because we are not getting answers for our prayers it's because we need the first prayer we need to pray this is Psalm chapter 51 verse 10. Let's repeat this word of God as a prayer before, maybe if possible, before every prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Together let's repeat two more times. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new spirit, spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Remember, this itself is a prayer. This is a prayer of the word of God. So when you are asking the Lord, create in me a clean heart, do you believe that God can give you a clean heart? We have already seen whatever you ask in prayer, believe you have received it. So he, once he creates a clean heart, he will put a new spirit in us. A new spirit of prayer. And most of the time, we are not, if anybody is struggling in prayer, you have no taste of prayer. It's a clear sign that your heart is not clean. So the first thing you have to do, create in me a clean heart of God. Because we read in Romans chapter 8 verses 6 to 8, why many of us are finding it very hard to pray and persevere. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. We continue until 8. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Sisters and brothers, prayer is an act of our spirit not of the mind. Prayer is an act of our heart, not of the head. So what we need to do, we need to submit our spirit to the Lord. As long as we are in the flesh, that means as long as our heart is impure, we cannot pray. So if we find we cannot pray and our prayer is not going through the first thing, we need a clean heart and the prayer for that is Psalm 51 verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. And the second thing for our prayers to be answered, that we need to put our relationship clear. 1 Peter 3, 7. If you are in a family, if you are married, if you have a husband, if you have a wife, before you pray, what you have to do? The, the scripture is teaching us, husbands, in the same way, Show consideration for your wives in your life together. Paying honor to the woman. Paying honor to the woman. If you are a husband, if you are always harassing, if you are always criticizing, if you are always accusing her and her family members, then how can your prayer be answered? So God is answer, asking husbands in the same way because there is in many families why there is no family prayer. The wife feel my husband never honor me. He is not a man who respects me. He is not giving me space. He is not giving me an oise. Then prayer cannot take place. 
because the lord is clearly teaching us a husband should respect the wife and a wife should respect the husband and that is the way our prayer can go through this is what god is teaching us we should consider one another and the third aspect matthew 6:14 to 15 that we should forgive a prayer with an unforgiving heart cannot go through matthew chapter 6 14 and 15 Jesus himself taught them for if you forgive others their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others neither will your father forgive your trespasses you are pray when you pray you are telling lord don't forgive me because i have not forgiven my wife my husband my children my neighbors my officer my coworker then our prayer cannot be answered you if you feel you cannot pray your prayer is not going through the third aspect is unforgiveness again mark 11:25 jesus said mark 11:25 jesus himself said whenever you stand praying forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses is a precondition of every prayer i cannot pray with unforgiveness inside my heart it cannot go through he wants us to forgive and when you forgive your prayer will go through if you feel tired you up you cannot pray there is an aspect of unforgiveness or hatred or revengeful feelings the lord wants you to surrender it and the fourth uh, thing is psalm chapter 66 verse 18 if there is sin inside me any secret sin that i am hiding i cannot my prayer cannot be answered psalm 66:18 psalm 66:18 if i had cherished iniquity in my heart the lord would not have listened this is psalmist he is the he is the one who wrote down all the prayers actually the psalms and he is he himself from his life experience he is telling if i had cherished iniquity in my heart the lord would not have listened so when i pray what is my heart it is it been filled with any kind of sin or iniquity or impurity then the lord cannot listen that's why i feel very hard my prayer is not going through if there is any sin hiding inside me sin of pornography alcoholism uh, drug abuse abusive words cursing words any kind of swear, swearing words even a uh, witchcraft occult black magic god cannot be listened because god is holy then James chapter 4 verse 3 the fifth one that if our intention is not pure you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures so if your prayer is not going through that means you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasure sisters and brothers if you find your prayer is not going through first of all is do you pray with a clean heart the second thing do you pray with a marital conflict that you have a conflict which you have not resolved with your life partner and you are praying the third thing are you praying with an unforgiving heart and the fourth aspect do you pray with an unconfessed sin hiding sin inside you and the fifth do you keep an impure motive your motive is impure and once we clear this god is going to answer and at the same time philippians chapter 4 verse 6 the lord himself is asking us put forth all our requests in prayer so whatever may be the request that we have do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god we know we we get so many prayer requests many people send prayer requests this is according to the scripture it's important we need to spend prayer requests to to god it is god's own word 
and what will happen god will answer whatever we ask in prayer will be heard it is god's god's own uh, request that we need to raise everything in prayer up to god and he is going to answer again matthew chapter 7 verse 7 we read ask and it will be given knock and it shall be opened let's repeat ask and it will be given you search and you will find knock and the door will be open for you sisters and brothers according to the bible scholars in the greek where it is been originally translated they say it's not just ask it the original word is keep on asking keep on searching keep on knocking and it will be happened because isaiah 50 Eight was one we read the speciality of our God, fifty nine one Isaiah, fifty nine one. See, the Lord's hand is not too short to save, nor His ear too dull to hear. See, when you keep on asking, knocking, and searching, we have a God whose eyes are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, and His ears are extremely sharp. he cannot pretend he will answer he will come to us and this is the same thing today's parable through the parable god is teaching us that we need to keep on praying praying persistently without any tiredness and we should be precise and sometimes what do we pray we need to pray on exactly what we need the lord asked this blind beggar this is gospel of mark chapter 10 verse 51 He was shouting, "Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me!" Jesus called him and, and asked him. Jesus said to him, "What do you want me to do for you?" The blind man said to him, "My teacher, let me see again." We need to be specific when you are praying. If you do not have a life partner, you have to keep on begging, Lord. I need a life partner. I need a husband. I need a wife. if you are childless you should pray i need a child like hanna 1 samuel chapter 1 verse 27 she herself said that she asked and god gave her ask and it will be given it is god's word 1 samuel chapter 1 verse 27 for this child i prayed and the lord has granted me the petition that i made to him let's repeat this once again for this child i prayed and the lord has granted me the petition that i made to him all those who are childless do you remember in the bible there are so many abraham he prayed and he got isaac isaac was childless he prayed and he got esau and jacob jacob was he had no children with rachel he prayed and he got benjamin and joseph Hanna had no child she prayed and she got Samuel if you look at the bible they prayed and they got and it's an honor it's a privilege to get a child when you pray and you get today during the kongani retreat we got a message the message was in this way many of you have maybe special names maybe biblical names but it's important you have to ask your parents why did they choose this name for you because they pray to the lord and god gave you it's as a gift from god so your life itself is a is a gift of god and it's a clear sign of answered prayer prayer never go unanswered sisters and brothers in one way or the other way it will have answer spiritual fathers say there are three answers for prayer one is yes the second one is no and the third one is wait and this answer wait why this answer is is the answer for most of the the most of the prayers isaiah 644 because god himself is working for us working on us for ages past no one has heard no ears has perceived no eye has seen any god besides you works for those who wait for him so when you are working actually when you are waiting god is working for you see for example 
if a woman is pregnant it is compulsory that she should wait for 9 months if the child comes out early it will be a big headache for you it will be premature and and the mother no she will suffer more if the child comes early god is working to form this child inside the womb so we need to wait for many prayers that we pray god wants us to wait upon the lord because ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 he knows what is best for us and he will give us more than what we ask let's repeat this now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine sisters and brothers to him be all glory because he is able to accomplish far more than all we can ask or imagine he gives us not just what we need even what we don't ask beyond our imagination i i do remember in one of the youth retreats one young boy came and he said father god has decided everything you are a priest because i i heard you preaching god formed you before you were born to be a priest so now you are a priest so whether you pray or not whether you i know you have tried to go away but again you came back but father even if you try you tried not to become a priest but god had already planned and you became a priest so even if you pray otherwise it will not be a, any different that means god has already decided to do whatever is in his mind so why do, do i pray will it make any difference because god has already planned everything about you everything about me so i should be in this way so i am in this way sisters and brothers it is a, a very big misunderstanding we should know that god is sovereign he has all power but he has not determined he is not involving in your free will for example if you are a father of your house you are in control you are in charge of your house but and you are in charge of your child but you don't force your child to do whatever you want him to do you have given your child free will you have given your child respect you give your child love that does not mean you are in charge or in control of his decisions god is a sovereign god but he is not a god who interferes in our free will what makes us a beloved human person is because god gives us great respect that's why we read in sirach chapter 15 verse 15 if you choose you can keep the commandments to act faithfully is a matter of your own choice god did not made you to do whatever you want let's repeat this word of god together if you choose you can keep the commandments and to act faithfully is a matter of your own choice god has given you the free will to pray and if the lord is he wanted his children to to be controlled exactly what he wants why he has given us the free choice he wants us to pray and not only that the bible teaches bible is the story of answered prayers bible is the book of prayer bible means a book of prayer what is we see in the book of exodus chapter 33 the prayer of intercession by moses and god changed his mind if he has determined everything the decision he has made to destroy the people of israelites how did he change he is not determined in the prayer of moses god changed his mind again in the book of 1 samuel which we have seen hannah was childless Joachim they prayed and God gave them a child again in the book of Exodus chapter 15 the people of Israel had no food they asked for food God gave them manna in the book of numbers chapter 11 we see that they had no water to drink and God provided for them water again 2 kings chapter 20 we read this king hezekiah he was sick and there was a decision that he is going to die but god changed his mind through his prayer then acts 
of the apostle chapter 12 verses 5 to 12 is an incident that peter was imprisoned when the congregation the church was praying god released him now let no one misguide us our god is a god who responds to our prayer and the third thing he commands us to pray today's scripture the lord is teaching us that we need to pray unceasingly we know that there are many husbands who lost who stopped drinking alcohol because of the prayer of the mother monica prayed and augustine got converted and became a saint if anybody is tired of prayer stopped praying questioning prayer the lord wants you to change it today with today's parable we need to pray persistently without questioning because jesus himself prayed jesus himself look at the entire gospel it is a, a gospel of the prayer of jesus john chapter 17 is all the prayer of jesus the lord wants you today to pray and let me uh, uh, let you pray one beautiful prayer we can find in the book this is one chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 maybe you have many material needs you have many requests pray for this prayer many struggling with financial crisis one chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 this prayer is called prayer of jabez this this one single word of god itself is called prayer of jabez we can pray this prayer let us repeat jabez called on the god of israel saying oh that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from hurt and harm and god granted what he asked let's look at this prayer he, what did he pray sisters and brothers he asked first to bless him the, he asked him to prosper him to enlarge his border that's a financial blessing and he asked the lord your hand might be upon me that is a hand of protection blessing prosperity protection and you would keep me from hurt and harm he was being delivered from every evil and god granted this sisters and brothers you can make this same prayer every day and your prayer will be answered today finally i want to say sometime even these days some years back somebody inspired me and and i started to pray for different nations the prayer was this we were praying with our people in kenya we will declare the name of a country like we say if we declare india they will respond <clears throat> let every knee in india above let every tongue in india confess that jesus is lord sisters and brothers it's a prayer word when we pray for nations it will be answered and those nations and those people will bend their knees and they will use their tongue to confess the name of god if any single person is praying they will become an instrument of blessing as the way you are the greatest contribution you can give to the church to the society is a prayer now we have this prayer counter that one single our father that you make is a great difference that you are making the the simple prayers that you follow the word of god that you pray is the power of this ministry when we are here standing praying preaching singing worshiping day by day because you are behind us with the prayer counter with the contributions that you do it is highly appreciated by god and we need to do it not just for us even generations to come one day we were praying in the night and the lord showed us a very big treasury it's written heaven's treasury and every prayer that we are making as if it is going to the treasury and god will use these prayers even for the generations to come let's sing offer tree him